Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin. You've heard of the Chromebook by now. You know those little notebooks that run uh, the Google Chrome OS, but have you heard of the Chrome Box? Well, now you have. This is it here. This is the Chrome Box from Asus, and there are some other Chrome Boxes coming out pretty soon as well. Uh, these are running, though, Intel chipsets, so they're actually running PC hardware, uh, and they're pretty darn quick, especially on boot up and uh, kind of navigating around different things. I've been very impressed with it. It's a 1.4 gigahertz dual core Celeron processor has the Haswell chipset, so it's fairly up to date. Uh, two gigabytes of RAM, but only 16 gigabytes of storage, which is rather interesting, but that's because it's running the Chrome OS and it requires uh, internet access really to be used to its fullest extent. So pretty much everything you're doing on here is just getting tossed to the cloud, to Google's cloud. I do believe they give you some extra storage when you buy the device, so you could, I think you probably end up with 100 gigs of online storage when uh, you buy a Chrome device. So at least you'll get uh, some extra space in Google's cloud for that. Now you could replace the drive. It's running one of these mSATA drives, which are these little tiny SSD drives. So you could probably pop that out and put in a larger one if you wanted to try to hack the device and have it run some other stuff, which I'll show you in another video. Um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty good, though. I'm actually pretty impressed with the hardware specs on board. Uh, you have two USB 3.0 ports on the front. You have a uh, SD card slot on the side here for camera cards and those sorts of things. If you have a micro SD, you'd have to get a little adapter and pop it in there. Uh, but again, you could also plug a card reader into one of these USB slots. Uh, you have uh, a DisplayPort adapter for larger monitors, and you also have HDMI for like 1080p and lower. Uh, two USB ports in the back. These are also USB 3. Uh, I should note that the Chrome box does not come with a keyboard or a mouse. So you're going to need to provide your own. A lot of us have these things just sitting around. This is a USB keyboard and a USB mouse. But uh, if you want to use wireless devices, you could get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. It does have uh, Bluetooth built in. Uh, you have Ethernet, so you could plug it directly into your network, or you can use Wi-Fi, which is also built in. Now, what really impresses me is the speed in which this boots up. So I'm going to pull up uh, our Chromebook here, and you'll and I'll put our uh, actual uh, device in picture in picture. So I'm going to push the button here, and you'll see the light come on. Now look how fast this boots. It just comes pretty much right up, and that's partly because there isn't much to load. Chrome is just loading uh, what it needs to run its web browser. But you can see, just in the course of a few seconds, we are already on our desktop screen there, and we are ready to go. Now, what's cool about this is that uh, this is, again, running the Chrome OS, which is a Chrome, basically a Chrome web browser, and that's all it really does. Uh, you can have multiple windows, of course, and that sort of thing, but you're really not going to run anything other than Chrome on here. Uh, but it brings in all of your settings from other Google applications. So if you're running uh, you know, Google Drive and you have a bunch of bookmarks set up in your Chrome on other devices like your mobile device or on your desktop or uh, notebook computer, all of those settings will be synced immediately. And, it, and it's amazing just how fast this sets itself up. You just plug it in, all your extensions, everything that was running on uh, your other main Chrome browser just kind of moves over. Uh, and anything you change on here will also reflect on your other devices. You can also have multiple accounts logged in as well. So if you have a whole family full of people, they can each have their own account and everyone will see what they would see anywhere else uh, with their Chrome box. So uh, really cool that you know it's kind of uh, device agnostic. You can pretty much run it anywhere. So all my bookmarks, everything I had was pretty much the same. Um, every link, though, just loads up a Chrome uh, tab, essentially. So for example, if I uh, were to click on the Google Chrome store, it just loads up a uh, you know, another tab in my browser. If I want to look at uh, Google Maps, it'll just do the same thing. But I have found that the performance in, of this device browsing around is so much better than I've seen on some of the Chromebooks because, again, this is running regular Intel hardware, so it's pretty much a PC uh, versus running you know, these uh, ARM processors, mobile processors that we're seeing on a lot of the Chromebooks. So this is a pretty uh, high-powered device, and it's also not very expensive, about $175. So. Uh, very uh, affordable and very you know, reachable for a lot of folks to use. So, uh, so that's how that works. What I am going to do real quick, though, is pull up our uh, memory card here. I'm just going to pop this in, and you can see how the photos work. Now, you can configure this thing to um, grab every photo you ever put in and have it just loaded into your Google account automatically. But I don't like that just because I like to store the full sizes of my images, and I don't want to you know, use up all my space on images I'm not going to keep. Um, so what I do is usually just load up the application here. And this is like the one like non-Chrome application, although I think it's running in HTML5 anyhow. Um, now, you'll notice, though, well, when you go and click on the card, uh, you probably don't know this, but I have about uh, a couple hundred raw images on here. And the only two that it's seeing 
are the JPEG images that I just dragged onto that folder there. And that's because uh, this doesn't support RAW. So if you're a pretty high-end photographer and you're shooting a lot of RAW images, this is not going to process RAW. It's going to look for JPEG or some of the other more standard files. So uh, you'll still probably need a PC to do that sort of stuff. But um, pretty much you just hit the OK button. And what it's going to do actually is load those images not onto the Chrome box itself, uh, but put it into the Google Cloud. So um, that's pretty much how you're going to be living. If you, but if you're using Google a lot or you have kids in the house that do a lot of schoolwork on Google Drive or whatever, this is going to be fine. I mean, this is a, again, a very low cost way to get a full fledged PC that can run all of Google's apps quite well uh, into your house for a very, very low price. And I think if that's what you're looking for, uh, this is going to be a really good thing to uh, put into your house. And what's cool about it too, is you can actually just mount it on the back of a monitor. So it reminds me a lot of like the terminals that we used to use back in the 80s and 90s and uh, maybe some of the thin clients that they tried pushing on us in the early 2000s. It's really kind of a thin client for Windows. So, um, but this can do more. So in my next video, uh, we're going to take a look at loading Ubuntu on here and actually getting a regular, uh, essentially a Linux installation installed so we can kind of have a more full-blown operating system at our disposal. So we're going to take a look at that uh, in my next video. So if you're not subscribed, do subscribe because in a couple of days we'll get that posted. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching.